5.5 exponents bases other than E. And today is a little bit different because today is, I think, the first day where we're going to take a function and not just drive it forward, but learn to drive it forward and drive it backward on the same day. Right? Like learning to drive, you've learned how to drive forward, 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 and then you learn how to drive backwards. That's what we did. We learned all the derivatives, and then we were starting to learn the derivatives in reverse. Today, we're going to learn a derivative and an integral, but you can see how they fit together because one's the opposite of the other. Um, let's, let's quickly review the E stuff. So this is old news. The derivative of e to the u is what? It's the derivative of e to the u. e to the u times u prime or du dx, however you want to phrase it. Orange triangle, derivative of the orange triangle. And the integral of e to the u, this is what we did yesterday, the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u with the plus c on the end. That stuff we already know. I mean, maybe not know super well, but we know it. What we're going to do today is bases that are not E. So something like 2 to the U. Now, it's very, very similar, but obviously if it's a different lesson, then something a little bit extra or different is going on. So it follows the same pattern. The derivative will be 2 to the U times U prime. But then the extra piece, you multiply by natural log of 2, natural log of whatever the base is. So that's sort of the new thing today. So it works just like you, like E's, except that you multiply by the natural log of whatever the base is. Going backwards. Care to take a guess at what it would be? It's, it's partly the same. Two to the u. We'll have a plus c on the end in a moment. Is there no u prime? There's no u prime because we integrated. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about u prime on this one. Yeah, but, LN2. but this ln two thing. When I took a derivative, I multiplied by natural log 2. And an antiderivative is going in reverse. We'll divide by natural log of 2. Whoops, I should have put that in red to make it all match up. So the rules are the same as E, except that you either multiply by natural log of the base if you're taking a derivative. If you're taking an antiderivative, that means you're going in reverse. You're doing the opposite. So you would divide by natural log of 2. So we'll do a few examples of each. First one, we'll do some derivatives driving forward. We'll get used to it. And then we'll put it in reverse and go backwards. Let's find f prime of x if f of x equals 3 to the 4x. So our very first one, so I probably shouldn't pull a popsicle stick, but anybody think they know what it is? based on the notes up above. 
Andrew? No? Three to the four X times four. Right, times natural log of three. So it's really similar to the e to the x, except you got this natural log three on the end, or natural log of whatever the base is. Let's do one more of those. I'm going to write it a little bit differently. Instead of saying f and f prime, I'm just going to say d dx. So take the derivative of x squared times 6 to the 5 minus 2x. going on here? Using a rule we haven't seen in a while, maybe. Product rule. You guys are asleep this morning. So we'll call the first one F, the second one G. So I'll need F prime and G prime, and then I'll have to figure out uh, how to put them back together. If f is x squared, what's f prime? 2x. Got the easy one. Uh, Tierney, if g is 6 to the 5 minus 2x, what's g prime? Same pattern that we did up here. So we'll start by just keeping the same thing. So 6 to the 5 minus 2x. But then what else do I need on the end of that? OK, so what's the derivative of 5 minus 2x? And then what else do I need on the end of that? Natural log of the base, so natural log of 6. OK, so that's that was the new stuff. The old stuff was product rule. So <coughs> f times g prime, that's going to be a mess. I'm not sure what the best order to write all that is in, but as long as we get it all, f g prime plus the other way, 2x times 6 to the 5 minus 2x. So a little bit messy because chain rules, that chain rule is always there, but this extra multiplied by the natural log of the base. All right, that's, that's driving forward. Now let's, let's drive in reverse. Let's integrate. Going backwards. So let's integrate 8 to the negative x dx. Integral of 8 to the negative x dx. Um, Anytime we're reversing, we better be careful about use of, or not be careful about, be alert for it. Like it, we might need to use it. So, best guess on what u should be for this one? Negative x. So I need a negative on there to make du show up. integral 8 to the u du. Well, the integral of 8 to the u is the same as the derivative of 8 to the u. It's just 8 to the u. Although, what do I need to <coughs> include? 
and with the extra piece. Well, I need the negative on there, but but what else? It, yeah, anytime the base is an e, I'll divide by natural log of eight. So negative eight to the negative x over natural log of eight plus c. Antiderivative, the integral of x to the fourth plus four to the x dx. This one's on there, not because either of those are really that tricky, but to see that those are different. The first one's a power, the second one's an exponent. So let's don't get them confused as to which does what. So, Sarah, how about the first one? What's the antiderivative of x to the fourth? Good. Izzy, how about the antiderivative of 4 to the x? You don't really have to because you would just be x. This is one of those where if we're just working with powers, everybody gets them right. If we're just working with exponents, everybody gets them right. But we jumble them up together and people start thinking, well, wait a minute, do I plus one on this or is this stay x to the fourth? And so this one is trying to illustrate um, or remind us the, the difference of those two things. Five. Antiderivative of x plus four times six to the x plus four squared dx. Looks terrible. You substitution ideas? If I do x plus 4, then I end up with u times 6 to the u squared, which basically I'd have to do another substitution on that, like a v substitution or something, which I wouldn't be wrong. It'd be nice if there was a way to like knock that out all at once. So I am suggest a better choice for you might be. Let's try x plus 4 squared. See if we can handle all of it at once here. So that would be 2 times x plus 4 to the first times 1. All right, if I take its derivative. Decrease the power by 1, multiply by the chain rule, I end up with 2 times x plus 4. Is that a, is that a good situation or not? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's really good. Because all I need now is a 2 on that one and a 1 half out front. And that combination of stuff makes du the integral of 6 to the u du with a one half out front. Again, use substitution and you pick it right, it turns your problem into a an easy, a hopefully easy problem. Mark, what's the antiderivative of six to the u du? Is it six u over natural log of six? 
That is exactly right. Plus C. I'm not quite done with the problem because I need to put the U stuff back in there. So 1 half 6 to the X plus 4 squared over natural log of 6 plus C. Let's do one more. The integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So already this one's a little different because we got limits on there. But we know that just means at the very end we'll, we'll do the top one minus the bottom one. 2 to the sine x times cosine of x dx. Thoughts for what u should be? Sine x, because, well, two reasons. One, we usually pick the exponent to be u. And the second reason is the derivative of sine is cosine. And we have that right there. So that's about as straightforward a u substitution as we could hope for. Integral of 2 to the u du. Okay, now's where we sort of come to this fork in the road of, do we want to change the limits to u limits and work the problem as a u problem? Or do we want to go ahead and finish the problem as it is, put everything back in terms of x, <coughs> and work it as an x problem? And again, you guys are split like half and half on the test, so I don't know which one to do. Make it a u problem? <laughs> it is a u problem. Let's see what you did there. You want use? First person to speak up wants it in use, so we'll do it in use. So u of pi over 2 is the sine of pi over 2. Oh, trig. Sine of pi over 2. It's up there, so that's 1. u of negative pi over 2. Sine of negative pi over 2 down there, so negative 1. So negative 1 to 1, 2 to the u, du. Now this problem is completely in u's. I don't ever have to go back to x's. That's the benefit, I suppose, a way of saying it, the benefit of switching to u's. Now the cost is you got to switch them to u's. So now I need the antiderivative, um, Natalie, of 2 to the u. So the antiderivative of 2 to the u. We don't have to switch it back to x. We can leave everything in use. Even if we were going to switch it back, we wouldn't switch it back yet anyway. So the, the antiderivative of 2 to the u is 2 to the u. Mm -hmm. and then but then or multiply or divide by it. Divide. Good. Divide by natural log of 2 from negative 1 to 1. And again, here's where people mess up. I don't have to put the x stuff back in because my limits are u limits. So I'm good. I can plug those in and be done. This is the the most frequent mistake is people make it here and then they put sine x back in for u, but their limits are u limits and so then they've got to mix up on on u's and x's. So 2 to the first over natural log 2 minus 2 to the negative 1 over natural log 2. And I suppose we could clean that up a little bit, but we're not in the cleanup business here. We're in the safe stop business. So 
we'd be good with that answer. And then you don't need a plus C because it's We don't need a plus C because it's a, it's a definite integral. It has a definite answer as opposed to an indefinite integral with an indefinite plus C answer. Okay, so I feel like we're, we're hesitant here. Let me do two more. Two more and then we're done. Derivative of 3 to the tangent of x. Um, Lauren, you look like you're ready to answer that one. The derivative of 3 to the tangent of x. It's okay. Look back. That's. Um, just do three to the tangent x times um, x squared x times the natural log of three. Good. So always remember the chain rule, but then also for base not e, natural log of three. Andrew, how about the antiderivative of five to the x? Still writing down the previous one. Yep, 5x over natural log 5 plus c. So that's why we put these two together to drive forward and drive backwards, is that they they kind of have part of the same thing. Um, always the chain rule or always plus C. That's sort of uh, normal for derivative is don't forget the chain rule. For integrals, don't forget the plus C. And then the new thing is when you're driving forward, we multiply by natural log of 3. And when we're driving backwards, we divide by natural log of or whatever the base is. Today's assignment is page 363, 37, 39, 43, 73 to 79 odd. So only seven problems, I think. The first three are derivatives. The last four are integrals. So the first three are going to have times natural log of something, and the last four will have divided by a natural log of something. I put yesterday's assignment in yesterday's folder. Apologies for not having that bookwork posted. And I'll have this bookwork posted in just a minute.